Uh, we also won on the grounds that teaching the... <laughs> <laughs> when we presented these data to the judge, now, first of all, I, I should tell you, Judge Jones is a very dignified person, and he ran a tight courtroom. We were all extremely polite. The lawyers, the lawyers made sure that we were on our best as important. They said, no eye rolling. No matter what ridiculous things you hear in the stand, you just sit there like little boy and girl scouts and mind your man. So we were really nice. We were really very, we didn't want to do anything, did we? And so, but I was sitting smack in front of the judge. I mean, I was sitting about as far away from the judge as I am to that camera. And I was watching him. He was a poker face. You could not read this guy. It drove me nuts. You know, there'd be all this testimony I'd be watching. So we showed him all these data, you know, the lines crossing and the fish with fins and scales and changing of the words and everything like that. And when we showed them that, that when we showed the judge that slide where the lines do like this, one eyebrow went up. <laughs> design policy is religious and so you can't teach it. We won because a judge decided that intelligent design was crappy science. And we really, really wanted that. We also won on the grounds, uh, although it wasn't as strongly expressed in the decision as we would like, but still, the, the gaps theories in Darwin's, uh, you know, the gaps problems in Darwin's theory, teaching evidence against evolution was really just a modern manifestation of creationism. And that is going to be hugely important for the next aspect of creationism, which was actually already brewing before Kitzmiller versus Grover. In fact, in our discovery of the um, uh, issues in the case, we found that the Discovery Institute, which is the intelligent design think tank, a lawyer from there had corresponded with one of the, more than one of the school board members to try to talk them out of passing this policy. The Discovery Institute did not want, don't try to read it, you go blind. Um, it's okay. uh, but it's real, it's from, it's a record thing. Um, the Discovery Institute did not want the Kids Miller policy. They, they did not, excuse me, did not want the Dover policy. They may be, you know, I don't know what they think of Tammy Kids Miller, but they don't want the Dover policy. They did not want a school board requiring the teaching of intelligent design. I think they figured out that if you call something intelligent design, a judge is going to say, and who is the designer? And then you get in trouble with the First Amendment. So instead, what they're promoting, as they started doing in the book by Jonathan Wells, Icons of Evolution, they are promoting instead the teaching of evolution, but balancing it with the idea that evolution is lousy science. So you teach the evidence against evolution. They have a brand new book out called Explore Evolution, which I call your attention to the uh, subtitle, The Arguments For and Against Neo-Darwinism. There are a lot of euphemisms for this, uh, which we're running into at NCSC at school board levels and state levels. S evidence for and evidence against evolution, strengths and weaknesses of evolution, teach evolution as fact, not as theory, not fact, a critical analysis of evolution, full range of views, and so forth. Well, so all that's well and good. Um, we're still feeling pretty good, though, about intelligent design. We do have to watch out for evidence against evolution. But we really thought that creation science was kind of over and done with, right? Uh, the ICR is still around, the CRS is still around, Answers in Genesis is still around. But you know, there seems to be a whole lot more creationist organizations springing up all over the place. This is the old-fashioned creationists have not gone into a hole just because intelligent design had a fluorescent. Unfortunately, this is almost an unending debate. And the traditional creationists, like the ICR, are actually expanding. If you have received the acts and facts, the little impact, of the, these little small format um, 4 by 5 brochures that ICR has put out for years and years, in August, you were probably quite surprised to find an 18 and a half by 11 large format, very fancy magazine 
type uh, publication for my CR that is far more expensive and far more attractive. And uh, clearly, uh, these folks are expanding. In fact, they are literally expanding. The ICR is moving most of its operations from Southern California to Dallas, Texas. Now, they already have three buildings in Southern California. They have bought a four-acre plot outside of Dallas, and they have two buildings already and conducting a capital campaign. The other thing that's going on is that Answers in Genesis, and many of you have heard about the opening of their $27 million museum, a 60,000 square foot uh, institution. The other 30,000 square foot is offices, and that's really horrifying. Um, the uh, parking lot is chock full every single day since they've been open. Uh, if you go to this museum, you can see little fun things like get your picture taken on the little satellite of triceratops. It's cute. Uh, they have very well landscaped grounds that uh, you can picnic on, and they have lovely bridges and ponds and everything like that. And um, it's really, um, uh, if you want to, if you go to our website and Google uh, AIG Museum, you'll get a whole tour. I won't take time to do it today. Obviously, the cartoonists had a really good time with the AIG Museum, uh, but this is boss who break it down here. Um, and uh, our, our good friend, uh, Steve Benson, uh, <laughs> so simple-minded creations can understand you. I love Steve, but boy, he really has a sharp pen, James. Now, the IT museums, I think, is something that you should, I'd like to tell you about, because there are lots and lots of creationist museums cropping up all over the country. The AIG Museum is clearly the fanciest, has the, the classiest graphics and the animatronic dinosaurs, but virtually any place you go these days, it seems like you can find a creationist museum. There's the, all these little mom and pop museums cropping up all over the place. The ICR down in Southern California was the first museum. It's not as fancy as the as AIG, but it's still a going concern. And one of the things that they're doing is providing uh, parents with materials like this AIG Accordion Guide, where you can run this off and take it into the real, you know, secular real science aquarium, and uh, and you know, correct the signage and correct the misinformation that your child might be getting by going to a secular institution. And they're also um, trying to establish, uh, well, they they have for a number of years been taking their own groups through museums like Denver's and the American Museum of Natural History, Smithsonian, and so forth. So they really they are using museums and the other informal science agencies as a way of promoting themselves. I want to call your attention briefly to something that's coming up soon in the theater near you, apparently. Some of you saw the article in the New York Times a day and a half or two days ago uh, by uh, Cornelia Dean, Scientists Feel Miscast in Film on Life's Origin. It refers to a new film that is uh, going to be released on Darwin's birthday, uh, February 12th, with Ben Stein, the title of the movie is Expelled, No Intelligence Allowed. 